guys. Well, welcome to Girls' Night Out. I am so, so excited to have you guys here tonight. We are going to have such a fun time. Uh, before we do, though, just a quick announcement. If you are in the Center Fire Shooting Group with Cindy and Lynn, raise your hands. Yay! Uh, you guys are actually going to leave in 15 minutes, right? 15? 6.45. I don't have my clock. So 6.45, if you are in the shooting group, just quietly stand up and walk out, and then she will tell you where you guys are going. Um, okay, so one of my favorite things about Girls' Night Out is before we get to go out and do all the fun stuff, we get to get into God's Word, right? So let me ask you this. Do any of you have a place where you get alone with God, right? It could be your car, your closet. It could be anywhere. Anyone? Have, have, yep. To I'm Toilet? Okay. Well, you know, that's, that's a place. That's a place. Absolutely. In your private time, you're definitely alone. I get it. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, well, I have a place, and my place is my patio. I love my patio. It's a screened-in patio. I go out there, and I see all the trees. There's some kind of weird animals, and I got, like, coyotes that kind of scare me every now and then. I saw one actually chasing a poor little rabbit through the yard. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's his dinner. Um, but, you know, I get to see all of God's creation, and it's just so peaceful. Well, it's peaceful if my kids are not home or they are sleeping. But the most part, it's actually very, very peaceful. And on, it was August 11th, it was a Sunday, and it was the day after Justin's birthday, and it was nighttime, the kids were sleeping, Justin was sleeping, and this storm literally came out of nowhere. It was crazy, like crazy awesome cool. And I was like, yes okay, I'm going out on my patio, I'm going to watch this storm, and I'm going to get some time with God. And I was like, this is going to be so awesome. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but in the middle of this storm, God really started to speak to me in analogies about what I was witnessing in the storm. Aren't you thankful that when you make time for God that he always shows up? Yeah. Amen. He does. So I just started writing down all these different ways that God was ministering to me during this crazy storm, and I'm going to share them with you tonight. Is that okay? Fantastic. So he started off with the reality of the storm, uh, and he said to me, he said, now, please know this is not an audible voice, okay? He's speaking to my spirit. I don't want anyone to be like, oh my gosh, Candace is hearing like boom from God in my patio. No, I am not. But... Um, he started with the reality of the storm first, and he said, look around you. He said, look at the crazy around you. He said, the storms, the loudness, all of this is going around you, but you are safe on your patio. And he showed me that the storm, and people have often preached about this, but the storm represents, you know, what we face in life, the chaos, the noise, the shaking of what we thought was secure in our life. But even though the storm was all around me, couldn't touch me. And God reminded me that in our storm, he's our protector. He's our shelter. And no matter how intense the wind and the rain become, we are shielded under his covering. And so the first reminder he gave me was he is our shelter in the storm. And the world may shake, right? But when we are in Christ, we are secure. So think of Mark 435 through 41. Everyone knows the story about Jesus calming the storm, okay? And the disciples, they freaked out, okay? They're like, we're going down. We're going down. I can see them running around the boat thinking this is it. And waves are high, water's coming into the boat. They finally run to Jesus. And they're, what is Jesus doing? Sleeping, right? Can you imagine? I'd be like, what? All right, I get storms can be like really great white noise, but really, Jesus, like kind of a sinking ship type moment, right? And what did Jesus do? He asked them, he said, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And then 
What did he do? He rebuked the storm and the wind, and calm was restored. And the Bible says that the disciples, they were absolutely terrified. And he said, who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. They still didn't realize how big their Savior was and what he was actually capable of. And I see myself way more than I care to admit being these disciples, okay? I see myself running around the sinking ship, freaking out. It's all coming to an end. What am I going to do, okay? And anyone else agree? Like, we've all been in a sinking ship type moment. And what do we do? We stay in that storm rather than seeking the shelter from our heavenly father. We end up focusing on the size of our storm, our situation, rather than bragging on the size of our God and being able to praise him through the storm. And let me tell you right now, I promise you, there is no storm that you can find yourself in that he won't or cannot rebuke. But even better, I know that you know that he's called you to rebuke the storm. Amen? So we can all agree we were going to have a Mark 4 moment in the midst of our storm and remember to seek shelter with our God. Amen? Okay, so back to my patio. We're back at the patio, right? Thunder was really loud, and it was one of those lightning strike booms that kind of like rattles everything a little bit, and I was like, oh, crap. Am I allowed to say that? Okay. I said it. I said, oh, crap. And I was like, what if the kids wake up? God, I know you're not done with me yet, but oh, my gosh. Lord, please. And I knew he wasn't going to let them wake up, which is absolutely crazy. Um, but I knew. I knew he wasn't done with me yet. And so another thing I started to realize about the story with Jesus and the disciples was in this time of Jesus' ministry, the disciples, they were still getting to know Jesus. They didn't know yet that he would die and rise on the third day. So I kind of give them like a freak out pass. I was like, you know, you didn't really know. You know, I'll give you a freak out pass. But we don't get that freak out pass, right? We don't get that. We know the word. We know our God. We know his resume. We know that he defeated the grave. We know times that he supernaturally moved in our life. And as Nexus girls, we know to build your life on the rock, not sinking sand. Amen? Amen. So in Matthew 7, 24 through 27, Jesus is teaching us to build on a solid foundation when the storm comes. Those who build on the rock, on Christ and his word, will stand firm. And if we build on anything else, we're bound to collapse under pressure, right? So... Ask yourself tonight, is your life built on the rock? Are you standing firm in faith, or are you kind of wavering? And here's a good way to do a check on that, okay? What are you saying to the storm, your situation, because we're all in one, whether it's a small one, a little one, we're all going through stuff. So what are you saying to your storm right now? It's not how you feel, right? You can't control your feelings, and we all know feelings, they aren't truth. So what are you speaking to that storm? Can you praise him in the rain? Are you rebuking your storm? Are you, this is important, are you commanding it to line up with the supernatural word of God? And in order to do that, you got to know God's word, right? So financial setback. No storm, absolutely not, because in Philippians 4.19, it says, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Struggling with anxiety, absolutely not, storm. Peace be still, I trust in the Prince of Peace to calm my heart. Facing rejection, absolutely not, because guess what? I am chosen, I am loved, I'm accepted by the king of kings, and this setback is just a setup for God's plan in my life. Worried about the future? Nope. Guess what? I'm not afraid of tomorrow because I know who holds it. He's already worked it out for my good in Jesus' name. Job loss, career uncertainty, promotion doesn't come from man. Have fun, ladies. We love you. (laughs) Be very careful. 
<laughs> we pray the hedge of protection over you all. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's great. Um, okay, family turmoil. No, because in Joshua 24, 15, what does it say? It says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. His peace will rule in our hearts. Feeling overwhelmed? Nope, not today, Storm, because I cast all my cares on him, for he cares for me. This storm will not break me. It's making me in Jesus' name. Fear of failure? Nope. Guess what God's word says? I can do all things through Christ. Good job, class. Good job. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Loneliness, starting to feel loneliness kind of creeping in on you. Nope. Guess what Hebrews 13.5 says? I'm never alone, for God himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you see how powerful God's word is when you know it and you're speaking it to the storm or situation that you're in? So let's speak truth to our storm. Right, ladies? Stand on the rock of Jesus Christ. All right, back to my patio. We're back there, okay? Then there was another thunder strike. Okay, this one, though, it sounded like it was literally over my house, and there was, like, a lightning strike that, like, lit up the whole entire backyard like it was the afternoon, and I was like, oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm fine. I'm safe. I know. God's speaking to me. Everything's fine. But this, is, this one really got me excited. He started to speak to me about boldness. What happens when we become the thunder in the darkness? Talking to us, right? When we bring his truth boldly into a world full of chaos. Have you seen the news? We're kind of in a world full of chaos. Yeah, we become the voice that cuts through the noise. Boldness is like thunder. It's unmistakable. It's undeniable. And he said to me, boldness in the storm brings truth to the darkness. That's good. He is good. And just like thunder, we are called to make a sound that cannot be ignored. In Acts 4.31, after the disciples prayed, the place where they were meeting, it was shaken. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. That's the kind of thunder we need to bring into our situations, into the storms that we're going through. Bold and undeniable truth. Amen? Amen. So then I thought about the rain. And, you know, the sound of rain is peaceful, right? You kind of fall asleep to it sometimes, right? White noise. But rain in its purpose is actually supposed to bring life right? It waters the earth. It causes the flowers to bloom. It nourishes what's been planted into the ground. So when you're going through a storm, think of it, and I know this is hard, but think of it as God watering the seeds in your life. Again, I know it's hard, but it's bringing forth life that you will see in due time. You will. I know you will. So our next reminder is the rain in the storm will bring life. The rain isn't meant to harm you. It's meant to produce growth. In Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, God says his word is like rain that waters the earth and causes it to flourish. It will not return empty. It will not. Stay faithful in the storm. Your faith is actually built in the middle of the storm. That's where your faith is built. And as you stay faithful and build your faith, you can trust that you're going to see the fruit over your life when it's over. And ladies, this storm is only a season. It is. It's only a season. It's not going to be like this. And if you remain grounded in the storm, you are going to reap in Jesus' name a mighty harvest. Amen. So the wind that night, super fierce, okay? Real fierce. I'm talking like trees sideways. I was like, wow. Anyways, it was crazy. Um, but then God reminded me, this is so fun. I get so excited. He reminded me that he moves things during the storm. Yes. Sometimes he's shifting things out of your life that don't belong in the midst of a storm, right? The lightning lights up the darkness, and what does it do? It exposes what's hidden. Don't be afraid of what your storm reveals, 
You can't be afraid of that. God is refining you when he reveals those things in your life. So that's our next reminder. God uses storms to move and reveal. The storm absolutely may blow things out of your life. But what are we to do? We are to trust that God is shifting what needs to go and exposing what needs to be dealt with. There are things in our life that we do need to deal with. And those storms, they're going to expose it. And it's important to remember that God didn't bring the storm. He didn't. He didn't bring you into the situation you're in or in the storm you're going through. It was either the enemy or it was by our own choices. That's how we get there. But it doesn't matter because God's going to use that storm no matter what. And he'll use it to move out things that, been, that have been holding on to, that you have been holding on to, to make room for the next greater chapter. Listen, he'll use it to move out the people that weren't for you, and then he's going to shine light on the people that are there to support you. And that's one of my favorite lessons about the story of Jesus calming the storm. The disciples freaked out until they realized who was on their boat. Pastor John has to remind me about that all the time. I don't want to make you think I'm unstable, but I freak out, okay? I'm just being real. I have that disciple moment more than I care to admit. Kayla can attest to that. The staff can attest to that. But Pastor John always says, Candace, who's on our boat? And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, you're right. But when you remember that the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is on your boat, Whoa, that he will never leave or forsake you, that you can have peace and joy in the midst of a storm. And plus, look around. There are a lot of amazing women in this room that would like to be on your boat, that would encourage you, that would help you, that will speak life into your situation. And that's what this Nexus Girl ministry is all about. We are not called to do life alone. That's our culture here. And I had the privilege in the last, I would say, probably three to five months just ministering to some other women. And the enemy wants to isolate you. He wants you to be alone. He doesn't want you to be here. Are you kidding me? You know how many cancellations we had tonight? Quite a bit. He was hard at work. I don't want to give him too much credit. I know life happens. But he was hard at work. And when you're isolated... You don't have anybody speaking into your life. You don't go, if you don't take the time to get into God's house and surround yourself with all these women that love the Lord and that can speak life into you, that's what he wants. We can't let him win. We're not going to let him win in Jesus' name. So after the storm, you know, there's always like a calm, right? The air cools, the sky clears. And everything feels just fresh. And that's the promise that we have in Christ. He doesn't just get us through the storm. He refreshes us after restoring everything that was shaken during that storm. And so the next reminder is God restores after the storm. God tells us in Joel 2.25, I will restore you, restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. Aren't you thankful that there literally is nothing in life that God cannot refresh or restore? There's not. There's absolutely not. Storm in your marriage. Take heart. He'll refresh it. Your career. He'll refresh it. Your health. He'll refresh it. Now look at one of your neighbors and say, girl, He's going to refresh it. Amen. That's right. After every storm, God promises restoration and refreshment. You don't just survive the storm, ladies. You come out stronger, with greater clarity, and a new sense of peace. So finally, I started to hear, like, the raindrops, you know, like from the gutter on the side of the house. And God spoke again. He said, that drip represented the blessings that he will pour out on you after the storm. He was, he, as we remain faithful, he will open, what does the word say? He will open the floodgates of heaven, pour out blessings so great that we won't have room to take it in. That's what it says in Malachi. 
So our last reminder tonight is after the storm, the blessings will flow. The storm is not the end of your story. It's not the end of your story. It's not going to be this way. It's a pathway to abundance. And you got to know that. you got to believe that. God has blessings stored up for you that are on the other side of the season that you're in right now. Stay faithful. Trust his timing. And watch. He's going to pour out his goodness all over your life. And so remember this. All storms pass. We understand that. They don't last forever. And God is with you in the middle of it. And ladies, please, do not take on someone else's storm. Don't do it. Don't take on someone else's storm. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. I'm not saying don't help people. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is don't take on someone else's storm because God has you in your own process for a reason. He does. And after the storm, let him refresh you. Let him restore you and strengthen you for what's next because he will. Now, I'm going to ask you, I know this was short because I want to make sure you guys go out and you have a wonderful time. But I want everyone just to close their eyes just real quick. And if there's anyone in here that is going through a storm, maybe you're running around the boat like the disciples. Maybe you're anxious, you're fearful, you're worried, you don't know what to do. We're going to pray over you tonight. And if that's you, just raise your hand and don't be embarrassed because this is a, a, a house where we can all be transparent. If you can't be transparent at church, you can't be transparent anywhere. Now, keep your hands up, please. The women that did not raise your hand, I want you to open your eyes. Do not be embarrassed. Go to someone that has raised their hand. This is what Nexus girls do. We pray over each other. I want you to find somebody that has raised their hand. I want you to lay hands on them, be near them, because we are going to pray and speak life over to these women. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come to you right now, God. Oh, I can feel your presence, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for filling this room. Thank you, Lord, that each and every one of your daughters is here tonight, God, and they are struggling. And God, they don't know what to do, but we know that you know what to do. God, we know that you have called them for a purpose, God, a purpose for your kingdom, Lord, and that whatever brokenness they have, it come off of them right now, God, that there is no more anxiety, there is no worry in this house, that we are strong women of God, Lord, that we know you are on our boat, God, that you are in the middle of the storm with us, and tonight, tonight, we will be bold, God. We declare the boldness to come over each and every one of these women tonight, God. Lord, that tonight, after we are done praying, Lord, that they just feel refreshed and renewed because the season of the storm is over in the name of Jesus. We will not let the enemy win. We will not be in isolation. We will come together as kingdom women and we will support one another. We pray just the peace of God over every one of these women tonight, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for moving in their lives. We thank you, Lord, for the peace that you're giving them right now, Lord. And Lord, that we just give you glory. We give you glory for what you did tonight. We give you glory for your word tonight. We praise you and we thank you for each and every one of these women. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love you ladies so much. It's so awesome just to see the smiles on their face. Because guess what? It's, it's done. It's over. You can let go because Jesus is on your boat. You're not alone. You're not alone. I don't care what the enemy tells you. I don't care how you feel each and every day that you're lonely. You're not alone. You're not alone because all of us, we're right beside you at all times. Amen? Hey, Pastor John here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, leave us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the bell. You'll be notified every single time we drop a brand new video. Love you guys so much, but more importantly, God loves you and he is for you and not against you.